This is the Paranormal Podcast with Jim Harrell. Welcome to another edition of the Paranormal Podcast. You know, it's really uh, fun getting back in the saddle. Uh, I've been recording shows, posting them, uh, getting active on MySpace, and getting some good feedback on the new shows. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for sticking with us. Uh, you know, there were some long gaps between those missing shows, but now we're back as you can see, and they're going to keep coming. And we've got a good one tonight, I think. Uh, my guest tonight is Lawrence R. Spencer. He is the author of a book called Alien Interview. And uh, it's really a fascinating study about the uh, Roswell crash and uh, the aftermath. And uh, uh, Mr. Spencer has written several books. He's written Alien Interview. He's written a book called uh, The Big Bleep. Uh, he's written Pan God of the Woods and also The Oz Factor. So it's a pleasure to have you, Lawrence Spencer. Thank you very much for taking time tonight. Thanks, Jim. It's my pleasure. So, you know, a kind of subculture and a kind of industry has grown up around the Roswell crash. Um, you know, I think probably everybody uh, listening knows about that crash in 1947. Um, you were mailed an interesting set of documents that kind of, I think, uh, created this book or spawned this book. Can you tell us how you got introduced to this subject matter and and uh, what happened to, to, to get this book going? Okay. Uh, as I mentioned in the, the pre-interview conversation that we had, uh, I'm not actually the author of this material. I'm the editor um, in this case. Although I've written other books, uh, in this case, the materials provided in the content of the book are not not my creation. What I've done is edit the material. The way I came by this material is, is kind of an intriguing story in itself, and I try to cover that in the, the book as explicitly and accurately as possible. But, uh, a brief overview is that in 1997 and 98, I was doing research for my first book called The Oz Factors, which is a nonfiction book, which reviews um, the history of of logic and uh, thought processes in Western civilization and follows it through uh, all the way to present time, and ultimately uh, covers the subject of vested interests. Uh, Ultimately, I think everyone observes and would agree to, uh, agree to some extent that everything that we do in our life is influenced or motivated to a greater or lesser degree by a vested interest uh, uh, for survival or against survival of something else or something along that line. That's most plainly seen in uh, governments and religions and economic um, activities. People are look out for themselves first and do things motivated by their own survival or the survival of their group or what have you. So that was the nature, that's uh, essentially the nature of the, the Oz Factors book. Um, and along that line, I, I got into the subject of ancient uh, history and ancient archaeology and so forth. And as you know, there's lots of controversy and speculation about uh, all kinds of things uh, of that nature, you know, the, the pyramids, uh, the Mayan culture, on and on and on, uh, subject to lots of conflicting opinions and um, alleged research and a number of vested interests tied up in that, uh, the, the counterculture or alternative worldview researchers as opposed to the established academic uh, vested interests that are funded by governments or other institutions that have to justify funding or paychecks. So um, in the course of my investigation and research into that kind of material, uh, I ran across, as most everyone does, um, and I'm as interested in the next guy in aliens and the, the possible intervention of aliens in the affairs of Earth and the history of Earth and that sort of thing, and uh, the subject of evolution and all of the related material. So along the course of that investigation, um, I was referred to uh, a lady um, 
who's named in the book, uh, who's the, uh, the actual author of the materials, Matilda O'Donnell McElroy. Uh, and somehow, and I don't even remember how, back in 97 or 98, I called a phone number that I was given, and somebody told me that this lady uh, had something to do with the Roswell cra crash or Area 51 or something like that. They weren't sure. So just on a lark, I called, and she answered the phone. And I said, introduce myself, and told her what I was doing and what I was trying to accomplish and the purposes for my the book, the odds factors that I was writing. And uh, she basically said, well, I don't have anything to tell you. And But yes, I do know something about that, but I can't tell you what it is. Um, so I talked to her basically about um, my project and what I was doing and so forth, and subsequently mailed her a copy of my book when it was published. And um, so 10 years later, sort of a long, long time. I said the only conversation I ever had with her was that one phone conversation for about 20 minutes, I think it was. So about 10 years later, last September, or August or September, I received a packet of uh, materials in the mail, mailed from Ireland, um, from her. And uh, I had really forgotten all about it. Anyway, the, the materials contained in the envelope I received were transcripts according to the letter I received, um, transcripts of interviews done, conducted by her uh, when she was a nurse in the United States Army Air Force in 1947. She was stationed at the 509th Bomber Squadron in New Mexico, which is you know the site of the Roswell crash and so forth, and she uh, alleges that these are copies of the transcripts of the interviews that she conducted uh, at that time uh, for the military, and um, she added a personal let a letter of introduction that she typed and uh, also notes, descriptive notes, to clarify certain portions of the, of the transcripts and so forth. So what I did was... I looked all that over, um, and I think anybody who reads the material will agree that it's it's pretty astonishing, to say the least, and uh, to any average citizen, I would think, pretty far-fetched. Um, but, you know, that's all subject to personal uh, opinion and speculation and what have you. So I sat on the material for quite a few months, ruminating about, you know, whether this is what I should do with it, if anything. Um, and, uh, and if I were to do anything with it, what form it should take, and so forth. So I also, during that time, tried to verify that this person actually existed or get in, and get in contact with her, and so on and so forth, as I explained in the book. Basically, every, every lead or every trail that I had to contact her resulted in a dead end. Uh, the name that she supplied to me is a false name uh, for reasons that become obvious to anyone who understands the sensitive nature of top secret government documents, um, particularly in this case as regards alien uh, activity and so forth. Um, anyway, long story short, um, I couldn't verify her existence and ultimately determined that she had actually uh, passed away, she and her husband both, uh, in Ireland uh, some months, uh, several months, I guess, after.